Hi, just a quick follow-up video on the Raspberry Pi Compute module. You will see that I have a, well, it's not a new one, it's out of the other unit that I have, uh, which unfortunately, uh, d like it's an old engineering sample and uh, it doesn't have the latest, it doesn't have the software properly uh, set up for it. So I'm going to reflash this board because the Raspberry Pi compute module uh, doesn't have an SD card built in, it's got eMMC memory uh, built into it, and hopefully we're going to use my little WaveShare um, CM4 Nano B board here. Apparently it is capable of uh, booting, of operating the USB-C input and as a remote um, update drive thing and we can install, um, override the new Flash Raspberry Pi Flash OS and then uh, Peter from AERL will be able to remote log into this and then set it up uh, properly. So hopefully, yes, I'm aware of the... <laughs> that's what happened to the uh, thermal pad on the uh, processor there. It's a bit crusty. But anyway, um, let's plug this thing in and see what we get, shall we? So you remember, we'll get in like 7 watts on the foldy one and when we remove the, because it was just overloaded, that board was just cactus. So let me show you this one and we'll be able to view, I've got the HDMI output here, we'll be able to view that as well. There you go, it's only drawing a watt when it boots and, oh, there we go. Um, there's the Raspberry Pi OS and it's, let me turn that off, it's booting, there we go. No wackers. I have no idea. I assume that's all regular Raspberry Pi stuff. And then it's got uh, tail scale though. Is that normally part of the uh, Raspberry Pi OS? And then we've got the login. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, it's not set up and the login doesn't work properly. And anyway, so I'm going to nuke this sucker. Nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Yeah, and then Peter will be able to remote log into this and then set it up for the AERL battery uh, gateway function that it's used for. So 1.2 watts. There you go. That's more like it. Okay. <laughs> That's more like it. Of course, the processor is just sitting there idle at uh, a boot. It'll take you know, substantially more if you're actually you know, uh, playing Doom on the thing or something. Okay. So I've downloaded the latest Raspberry Pi uh, installer here. Should be really easy. Now, we can actually set this. This uh, WaveShare Nano B board has a boot switch which allows us to enter USB-C boot mode. So that is, so it appears as a drive. I believe the EMC memory in there um, appears as a drive, and the image you can just you can just flash it to the internal memory, which is on here. Where is it? There or whatever. One of those. Um, so you can install it um, directly on there. This board does have a micro SD slot there, which you could use if you were using this adapter board, uh, but we're not. We're programming the compute module, putting it back into the embedded product, the AERL gateway, so we need to program the onboard uh, memory and not use that flash. So anyway, uh, let's plug that in, shall we? And in boot mode, so we've got to turn boot mode on. I think boot mode just like straps one of the pins to ground. I'm not sure which one um, I, I think don't quote me on that so let's plug that in there you go we are running and okay it's only 0.4 watts in boot mode so you can see that's using significantly less power in boot mode so it has it looks like it has gone into boot mode no worry choose device uh, 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 Raspberry Pi 4R, ah, the Compute Module 4, okay, yes, alright, so it, it's identical, it makes no difference, okay, I didn't know that, never programmed a Compute Module before. We want, uh, I guess, the latest Raspberry Pi OS, don't want Legacy or anything else, no, don't want any of that weird stuff, Debian Bookworm. Okay, storage, it's not appearing as a drive, exclude system drives, um, no, <laughs> we don't, don't want to override our system drive so it's not appearing okay so aha uh -huh. pays to rtfm um yeah it doesn't do this automatically i need to do uh, need to install the uh raspberry pi boot installer which is then mounts it as an actual drive that's why it's not showing up uh for windows users install the i just googled it and this is what showed up so this goes to the official raspberry pi yep okay Set up, that should, I should be able to download that. Raspberry Pi USB boot setup, yep. Yep, whatever, sign my life away. Yeah, USB boot, and I assume, will I have to reboot after this? Don't know. Should read the RTFM more, shouldn't I? Installing drivers, okay. So it doesn't just magically appear as a Windows drive. And I guess, with hindsight, yeah, that's fair enough. I'll tell you what, it's taking its time. Oh, that's flashing at me as if 
Okay, I'm at a prompt. Does it now work? Do I have to do anything? Do I have to put in any, in, in any penguin commands? No, it's still going. Oh, it's full. <laughs> yeah, I guess trust in the major progress bar up the top. <laughs> but it, it was sitting there at a prompt as if it wanted me to enter something. <laughs> oh, there we go. Complete. I still got it plugged in, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to leave it plugged off or plugged in. Anyway, uh, next. Do I... Oh, no, I've got to run it, right? Choose storage. No, I think... I assume I have to run it. Yeah, here it is here. Raspberry Pi boot. Okay, so I've got to run that, I assume. I've got to run that. Load in. Sorry, you're not seeing that. Oh, there we go. Cannot open. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, boot. Oh, yes, yes, there's a problem with this drive. Yes, yes, it showed up. There you are. Boom. We're in like Flynn. Boot FS, boot file system. BCM 2711. Yep, th there we go. That's all the files on the internal. Yeah, that, that, that appears as a drive. So now it should pop up as a drive here, and it does. There you go. I've got the 8 gig version. There you go. That wasn't hard. Just had to RTFM. So choose our device. We've got a Raspberry Pi 4 compute module. Choose OS. We want just a 64-bit port. And choose storage. We want that. And next... Would you, uh, would you like to apply OS customization settings? No. <laughs> Don't care. Uh, Peter just told me to install like a blank install on there and then he can um, uh, remote into it. All existing data and rather will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. All right. Cool bananas. Uh, you need to format the... J no. No. That's a Windows thing. No. No. Don't get sucked into that. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you tried to do that at the same time. <laughs> Something very bad, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll get back to you when this is done. All right, we are programmed. I'm going to put that out of boot mode again and plug this in. And boom, it's booting. Can we see anything? Yes, yes, we are booting. Ah, and this should be a different boot process to what we had before. We're still drawing a what? There you go, so the, you know, for those playing along at home, what seems to be the nominal value for... Oh no, it's up to 1.8 now when it's booting. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely a new new installation. Yeah, it's just going to go to the desktop. Silly me. It's not going <laughs> to... I don't think it's... Uh, well, yes, it's sure. Welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Powered, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I may actually have to connect a keyboard and do something here. Anyway... There you go. I won't bore you with the rest of the details, but that is a new uh, compute module um, flashed. And so I should be able to get back on track. I just love that. <laughs> it's doing needlework. <laughs> Good enough for Australia. Um, anyway, there you go. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Comments down below. Catch you next time.